Hello and welcome to CEN4801. This session will address the second phase of systems design which, uh, uh, system, which is systems analysis. The systems analysis phase answers the question what must system do to solve the problem. If we are designing a new system, information has to be gathered from stakeholders such as uh, management, users, uh, customers, contractors, anyone that will be interacting with the system should uh, be uh, interviewed or uh, the information should be taken from them to know what kind of problem the system will be solving. What's the goal? What's the purpose of the system? If there is any existing systems uh, or system in place, then we need to gather data on the existing system. If we have a system, we need to analyze it. We need to understand it. We, we need to know the purpose of that system. Then we need to determine the requirements for a new system by identifying the gap between the existing system and the required functionalities of the new system. What are we missing? What's this system missing? Uh, the information that will be gathered will include system constraints, limitations, and assumptions. Part of the analysis is to look at design alternatives within these constraints and investigating the feasibility of each solution or design alternative. The outcome of the analysis will be a list of systems requirements which will be uh, translated later on into design specifications, features, and functions. Following the steps, uh, the steps of analysis, we start with collecting data. To collect data, we need to identify internal and external resources of data. Collecting data from these resources could be through interviews, um, whether uh, we can do it structured or unstructured. Um, you can uh, observe systems op op uh, operations. Um, just you know be there and watch what what's going on uh, with uh, each process directly uh, you can also use surveys and questionnaires to, uh, structured or unstructured to collect the required data from uh, system stakeholders especially if the stakeholders were spread over uh, a wide geographical area then you can send the survey via um, uh, either web link or via email uh, to collect the information needed. The table in this slide identifies internal and external resources based on their interaction with the system. This table can be altered based on the organization and the type of business we are dealing with. So this is not set in stone. Uh, we can change it based on the company uh, that uh, we are in or we are dealing with. The design team can use different software packages and statistical tools to clean the data and find the trends and patterns related to each component in the system. The data can be used to identify the different components, creating an entity relationship diagram, which includes objects, attributes of the objects, and their association with each other, the interrelationship between each other. We can also use the data to create an activity model, uh, such as data flow diagram, which will provide the objects and their uh, association through defining the activities of the system. This slide shows an example of a data um, uh, entity relationship diagram. Uh, the two identified entities in the system, member and golf, has been connected through a relationship member plays golf. Uh, this slide shows an example of flow diagram showing the different activities within the system such as you know assigning time, scheduling, uh, checking member in, creating card, sorting scores and recording scores. This slide shows an example of a semantic description of the business process within the system. So we can also describe what's going on in that business and we can describe the, uh, each business process um, separately. For a successful requirements analysis, we need to identify everyone who will be involved in the system. 
to make sure that we are capturing all system functions, features, and processes. We need to ask directly the stakeholders and we need to ask about the critical success factors of the system. Um, the questions have to be short to the point and captures these critical areas. An information system plan will be created to translate the strategic planning into initiatives in the design process. We can use computer-aided software engineer, engineering, which is called CASE, as tools to provide an uh, automated assistance for software and system development. CASE is considered as tools and methods to support engineering approach to systems development at all stages of the process. Since we are in the design stage, this is called front-end case analysis which provides support for the early stage in the or early stages in the systems development life cycle such as the requirement analysis case tools could be used in the back end to provide support for the later stages in the life cycle such as code generation and testing and we can use it in the integrated uh, phase to support both the early and later stages of the integration. The requirements analysis will convert organizational goals into systems requirements through strategy translation. Another tool that can be used in the analysis is the object-oriented systems analysis. This tool will identify problems or potential opportunities. It will identify key participants for data collection. And it uses classes and generalization, specialization, hierarchies instead of uh, the data flow diagrams and flow charts. This is an example of an object-oriented system analysis. Although this addresses a kayak item, uh, we can use another good example, which is like a plane uh, as an object. The aeroplane as an object has general characteristics of um, that plane, such as wings, main gears, landing gears, tail, size, speed, the year of manufacturing, so on. These general characteristics can be inherited to Airbus or to Boeing. Additional characteristics will be added to distinguish the two manufacturers from each other. Boeing will have other subclasses such as 727, 737, 747, 757, 767, 777, and 787. All these airplanes, has, you know, each one of them has, uh, although they will inherit the same characteristics, but each one of them will have its own additional characteristics to distinguish each model from the other. Once we are done with the analysis, the team can develop a system analysis report that will cover uh, strengths and weaknesses of the existing system from, st from a stakeholder's perspective, the user stakeholder requirements for the new system, also called the functional requirements, uh, organizational requirements for the new system, description of what uh, the new information system should do to solve the problem. The report will be used as a verification point before moving to the design phase. We sit with the client, we sit with the stakeholders, make sure that this is uh, what uh, the system or this the, those are the specification for the system they are looking for. And at that point, we can do a little adjustment or little changes to move on to the design stage. That will be all for this session. If you have any questions, you can email, call, Skype, or come in person. Thank you and have a great day.